have a super quorum. Okay, so let's come to order then at 6.04. And um, we have a lot going on today, uh, tonight, this evening, um, both institution building of our own and working with other institutions. Uh, that's going to be coming up in the core of the meeting. But before we, we launch into it, I must um, beg the indulgence of our patient public and um, allow us to go into executive session for what we estimate to be about a half an hour. That would be the target. Um, this executive session is, um, has a lot going on. It would be entered into under Title I, Section 313A1A, B, C, and 313A4 for um, personnel, administrative, student, and negotiations. <clears throat> so if I may um, ask for a motion to go into executive session with Brian, Carla, and Scott Cameron, I do believe. Is that correct, Brian? Uh, yes, it is. He is uh, having an issue. He just texted me saying he has a, he's having an issue getting uh, he's having a login issue. Uh, so I might we we have other things to talk about besides what we're going to talk about. So we could go in first, and then uh, I can ask Carla and Scott to, uh, Cameron to come in when he gets here. Very good. I see Flora. Your hand is up. Caroline is having a hard time getting in the meeting. She wants to join the executive session too. So just to let Jim know, maybe he can help her. <laughs> You got that, Jim? Or thank you so much. I will uh, as soon as I see um, I see her come in. I'll make sure I, I keep jumping back and forth. It looks like she's just trying to arrive now, so that's good. I'm going to go ahead and admit her into this meeting, so she'll be here in enough time. So that's terrific. Excellent. So we still need a motion to go into executive session. Kari, you move. Thank you. Second. I'll second it. It's Lindy. Thank you, Lindy. All right. So uh, all in favor, um, click yes or show a thumb. Okay, I'm seeing nobody objecting. So we are entering executive session at 6.06 .06 p.m. Um, Jim, is there anything we can do to make this easy for you? Um, I am. Uh, if you if you want to raise your hand in the thing, I think I have most of the board members down. I just uh, in case I miss anyone who's going in. Um, thank you very much. Okay, so we have. Um, let's go ahead and assign everybody here. One second. Thank you very much. I see everybody who's done it so far. Jim, it looks like Scott Cameron might be on the list now. I haven't been able to. Grab yes, he, he is here, which is terrific. So we're going to bring Scott in. I'll bring Carl in as well, okay? Perfect. Great. Outstanding. And um, let me just uh, get the list of everybody else on the board here. We have Gael, we have Jill, we have Jonas, John Goddard, we have Kari, Caroline, Lindy. We're getting close here, everybody. Thank you for your patience. Many thanks once again to our patient, long-suffering public. Um, appreciate your, those of you who are able to wait, appreciate your waiting. Um, do we have any agenda revisions tonight, anyone? I'm not seeing any. So let's move to Anna and Towns for the student reports. Awesome. Sounds good. Go ahead and go through with y'all. Absolutely. Um, so middle school students are starting uh, their uh, pen pal, and they're going to be uh, writing to pen pals their own age in Switzerland. That's pretty cool. Stage 32, um, 
couple, about a week ago or so, they performed their virtual show, which is called oh, Tales oh. Monsters, and I believe that is recorded somewhere if you guys would like to see that. It looked very interesting. Um, three U32 students were accepted into the New England Music Festival, uh, which is very exciting, so we'll get to showcase some of our musical talent. The um, library has created a lot of really good resources throughout the pandemic, including um, having books to the online students who can come pick them up, and they also have been doing some online tutorials to some really cool crafts uh, that gives a lot of creativity for our students. Um, Nordic Skiing has their first meet this week, and middle schoolers are going to start uh, with their winter sports. And then to close off our little report, we had our first snow day yesterday, which is very exciting as we did not expect to have that during this pandemic time. So that was very nice. Thank you for ending on a high note. Um, uh, are there any board member questions for uh, Towns or Anna? If not, um, oh, Jonas, please. Not so, not so much a question, but I know the Towns mentions this frequently, but I hope that everyone on the board uh, reads the U32 Chronicle frequently. Yes. <laughs> Lots of good stuff in there. Thank you. Yeah, we're uploading on the Chronicle, hopefully weekly. So you guys should look out for some really good articles, Dan. Yeah, um, thank you for that pitch, Jonas. Agreed. Okay, um, we can move on to superintendent report then. Um, Central Vermont Career Center Governance Study. Yeah, so I'm going to introduce Penny. Uh, is Penny, uh, I'm going to turn it over to Penny Chamberlain without further ado. All right, thank you. Good evening, everyone. I appreciate you giving us some time on the agenda this evening. You have a very busy schedule, so I, I won't delay. I will. Um, I would like to introduce to you the uh, folks that are joining me this evening um, from the Central Vermont Career Center. Starting off with Mike Davies, who's our consultant, who's been working with us with the, from the Branch Schoolhouse Consulting Firm. Dr. Scott Griggs, who's our assistant director. Clifton Long, who's a CDCC instructor, and Cal Hopwood, who's our media lead and also a CDCC instructor. I'm not sure if Cal is here with us this evening, but in case he does join us, I wanted you to know uh, who he is. So the Career Center, we sent uh, a packet out to all of you in advance in your board packet to review, which consisted of a cover letter that outlined briefly what our wishes and focuses for this evening, and I will cover that a little bit with you this evening. Also in the packet is our a white paper that was created by uh, Mike DeWees on looking at governance for the Central Vermont Career Center and considering other governance options. This was presented back in December to the Barry Unified Union School District Board, and they approved uh, and agreed for the Career Center to move forward with a study committee to look into governance and to um, research and investigate the pros and cons of a variety of different governance models. Also in your uh, packet was a chart and I outlined pro pros and cons from three other uh, independent career centers who more than a little bit more than 15 years ago also went through this process and are their own governance structure now their own uh, regional technical center school districts. And that would be River Valley Technical Center, Patricia Hannaford Career Center, and the Southwest Vermont Regional Technical Center down in Bennington. So I'm going to read a, a portion of the um, memo that I sent to everyone to give a little bit of a background to what this is all about. One of the challenges, of the many challenges that a career in tech ed has with um, trying to align with regular education is being governed under a pre-K-12 board. And as you have, have noted tonight, starting out your uh, sessions and your lengthy agenda, there's a lot of business that needs to be covered and, and managed by a pre-K-12 education school board. And career tech ed runs slightly differently 
than a regular uh, education um, school board. We have different regulations. We have uh, different licensing, different funding mechanisms. Um, in, in essence, we're running a business, a business inside a school and then several businesses inside of that center as well. So in short, we wanted to be able to look at a, a different governance structure for the Career Center and investigate that and see if that was a possibility. In order to actually do this, we needed to present to each of our school boards the governance white paper that we provided and ask for your approval to move forward with a study. Now the study is just that. It's a study of a, a committee of 14, 12 to 14 people who would meet for six to nine times during April, May, and June um, and look at all of the components of a variety of different governance structures and compare that to what we currently do and what would the pros and cons be and what would be the best structure that would best serve our students across our region. You might have heard in, uh, in a variety of different ways, but you have a RAB member, Flora Diaz Smith is your RAB member who comes to our quarterly regional advisory board meetings. And the Central Vermont Career Center is also looking at a re-envisioning project, which is trying to figure out how to expand programs, improve our access to all of our districts across our region, and look at where we're located within our region, where we happen to be on the outer skirts of our region at this time. So the governance is one component, everything is another. So they're not the same, and nor did they have to happen at the same time. So you happen to be the first board that we're presenting to this evening, and we're interested in hearing questions uh, from the group to see if there is anything that we could answer or help clarify, and if this board would be willing to uh, approve for the center to move forward with a study committee. And we would need the majority, five out of six school boards in our region to vote for us to move forward if that were to happen. With that, I would like to um, ask if there's anything that my team who's here with me tonight would like to add before we step into questions and answers. Well, Something I'd like to offer something, if I may. So I'm uh, Cliff Long, I teach plumbing and heating at the center. And, um, you know, I think our connection with the school board is extremely important, but the Barry board only represents one of our sending schools. And so in a way it feels like it's kind of a buffer between us and the other sending schools. And I uh, was on the Washington Village School Board for many years and a chair of the Orange North Supervisory Union Board for a couple of years. And um, we really valued the connection that we made with teachers. Washington Village was a small school. We felt like we were very intimately involved. And I would like board members from the sending schools to come visit us, to get to know our students, to see what the students are doing, yeah. and to be involved in our decision making. I think that, you know, strong local control and the involvement of the community with public education is a Vermont tradition. And um, I think we can all really benefit from that. So I certainly think it warrants a study. And while we're on the topic, any of you are always welcome to visit us once the pandemic is over and uh, there's free access to the center. I would love to host you and show you what we do at the, at the tech center. Thank you. Thank you, Clifton. Uh, to further provide a little bit more detail in what Clifton is talking about, in order to provide an equitable voice for all of our sending schools in the region, a regional board would have full and legitimate authority, which would include a close understanding of technical ed regulation within the state board rules, which run parallel to most traditional education, uh, pre-K-12 education rules and statutes. Um, they would also have program approval, admissions, program design and curriculum authority, policy development and implementation, determine, they would determine the center budget and program needs, be involved in recruitment and retention of qualified staff, also uh, be involved with marketing and recruitment for students in grades nine through 12 across the entire region, which would also include outreach, middle school career, career awareness, um, and provide more, more flexibility for faculty and staff and industry partners to do presentations to the school board and have adequate time on a monthly agenda. This would also allow for a, a, a regional board to have full decision-making authority versus the RAB model currently has advisory duties only. 
and they would make recommendations to the current Bitter uh, and Unified Union School District Board. This would also allow for full board involvement in CTE matters and issues versus a shared board where the majority of your focus like this board is on a pre-K-12 business to no fault of their own. There's a lot going on and with the recent mergers that has uh, led to larger school districts and more business across a pre-K-12 system, uh, which makes it even more complicated. I would also like to uh, entertain either Scott Griggs or Michael DeWeese if there's anything else you'd like to add, and then I'd like to open it up to uh, questions from this board. Penny, it's Mike. Um, unless there's anything further that I can add about the uh, white paper, um, I think you captured it really nicely. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Hey, this is this is uh, Scott, um, and yes, I wouldn't have any specific information necessarily to to add. We've you know, enjoyed the support of the Beery Board over all of these years, um, but um, mm -hmm. I think that is a valuable note that um, we've had a, an effective uh, regional advisory board over the years as well. But uh, we are a diverse region, um, and it's a, it's a pleasure having been in um, at the Career Center for 20 plus years and uh, as a teacher for a time and then an administrator and seeing the groups of students come from our various communities within our classrooms. I think it would be equally powerful to have that um, diverse representation of uh, communities on, on our governing board. Great. Uh, I, I have a suggestion. Um, why don't we have a motion, the first motion. Um, and uh, I, I see Stephen has his hand up. Stephen Oak. I move to approve the Central Vermont Career Center request to establish a governance study committee to determine if a governance change is appropriate for Central Vermont Career Center. Thank you, Stephen. A second. Um, sorry, did that, where did that come from? Joe? Caroline seconds. Caroline. Thank you, Caroline. All right. Stephen moved. Caroline seconded um, the first motion to approve the request to establish a governance study committee. All right. Um, we have Penny and company as, uh, a, as a great resource. But if I might go first to Floor, um, would you mind, Floor, giving us your view of this? Oh, sure. I'm in complete support <laughs> of this. I think that this is something that is worth exploring. I am actually uh, willing to volunteer to do this and step down from the quality committee to do this work. Uh, I, I, I can't think, especially coming out of the pandemic, the more important thing to invest some of our time. And it's just as it, it is a study, right? It's not we we're not Correct. making a final decision tonight. We're just authorizing a study. And I I've been involved, as I have told you before, for two years now, and and we don't get much say in the quality of program, or you know, we don't have a real investment. As a, you know, we are a sounding board, but we are not really part of the decision making. And from talking with very school board members, they they want to have more involvement. You know, they're happy to do it, but they would like to have more people brainstorming with them. So. That would be my, uh, you know, my 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 input. And if I could, I would want to make this middle school. It's just high school too. Right now, it's we're just targeting high school kids, and it's too late <laughs> to be middle schoolers. So. Yeah. Thank you very much, Laura. Um, board members, do you have questions, concerns, anything you'd like to raise with regard to the motion, Chris? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> why is it that you need our approval to engage in this governance study? And, and then a follow up to that is um, if there's a different governance model that is um, actually adopted, um, what is the expected impact on uh, the Washington Central Unified Union School District? Two great questions. Uh, the first question, like why the approval? It's actually written into a state board rule. That's the process that ha that a, a school a center has to undertake with all of its regional boards in order to even write a proposal to the secretary of education. So we need your approval to move into a study committee. The study committee would then spend multiple weeks 
looking at all the pros and cons and then, and then writing that proposal uh, to the Secretary French. There are multiple steps that follow a study committee before anything would actually potentially be approved, which would also include uh, voting uh, by all 16 towns. So it's quite a large undertaking. And as far as impact, I think the, the, the one thing I would like to stress to uh, boards, there, there should not be an impact. There wouldn't be more um, work on your shoulders, on your plate. You would not have to take on additional work. This would be a separate uh, functioning board with membership from every region, every school district uh, on that board and who would be um, appointed and, and then eventually elected. So that would be, it would serve as its own board, much like you do as your supervisory district board, your unified district school district board and uh, Barron Unified Union School District Board. Two separate districts, two separate boards. You don't typically impact each other, only you would all have a shared voice in what happens in the shared uh, CBCC Career Center. Thank you, Penny. Um, other, I, I'm sure it did. We can't see his face, but I'm sure he's smiling. Um, uh, any, any other board members? Um, two separate questions? Or are we ready to move yeah, to a no. vote? I, if there are no other, I have another follow-up question. Then, is there oh, any? Is there any? Ahead, yeah, is there any budgetary impact that would, um, like, does this if if there's a separate board that is developed, does it have its own budgetary budgetary authority that would then impact our respective towns? The, the current funding structure structure for career and technical ed would remain the same until the legislature decides to change that. There is a discussion about changing funding for CTE across the state. Could, could happen in the next year or two, but we don't really know. The way it is right now, no, it, we would be, we already have our own budget that's required by statute as well. The CBCC budget is separate from the BUSD budget. It cannot be commingled. It sits on its own. It's created um, on its own. And the uh, difference would be, I wouldn't be paying an assessment if we were our own governing board. I wouldn't be paying an assessment to the BUSD, which uh, equates to about $200,000, $220,000 out of our budget. The only uh, expenses that would continue, which are already built into our budget, would be uh, the shared expenses I have because I'm sharing a facility with Spalding High School at this time. So it could uh, relieve a, a large portion of that assessment amount that's paid to the district. And I, from what I can foresee in talking with my counterparts, the other three uh, technical centers is I might have to hire an HR business manager in order to bring all the components of the supervised union district uh, work together under our umbrella. Otherwise we're adequately staffed and I don't see uh, an impact um, there could be a slight savings even. I, I don't throw that out there. I do have an under-level funded budget proposed for FY22, <laughs> but uh, it, there is no monetary um, but, uh, impact on our sending districts. You would still pay tuition as you do at this time on a six semester average basis. Great, thank you. Great. Wonderful. You're welcome. Any other board member questions, um, comments? Otherwise, we can vote on the motion to approve the uh, Governance Study Committee. All in favor, please click yes. Opposed, click no. And I am seeing all yeses. Um, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Um, how about let's uh, invite someone to make the second motion. And Floor, um, I, I don't know if it's appropriate for you to move to sacrifice yourself, but um, so I mean, it's, Stephen it's, had his hand up. <laughs> oh, Stephen, Stephen, look, please. I move to elect Floor um, to serve as a U32 district representative on the CBCC Governance Study Committee. Right, and, and in place of U32 district, um, Washington Central, et cetera? Washington Central. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, Stephen. That, and Chris seconded. Um, 
Laura, since you're the one who's in the spotlight, do you have anything on this one? Hey, no, I'm, I'm happy to do it, and I think it goes hand in hand with quality, and I've just stepped down from quality for now and just keep an eye on that, but not do that soon. It's wonderful. Thank you so much for being willing to do this. Um, other board member questions? If not, we can move to a vote. All in favor of appointing Floor to be our district representative on this, the Governance Study Committee, please click yes. Um, opposed, click no, and I'm seeing all yeses. The motion, again, carries unanimously. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. I appreciate your time this evening, and we will keep you updated as things progress. And Thank you. I wish you the best with the rest of your pandemic school year. Everyone stay well. You Thank as you. well. We appreciate your being here, too. Thank you Thank all. You. Thank, Thank you. Good seeing you, Michael. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Great. Um, okay. <clears throat> now, Berlin Town Center, 4.2.2. Yeah, so I just wanted to remind uh, board members that uh, this is a presentation made by uh, the town of Berlin. And uh, if there's any questions that you may have, uh, to please email, please let uh, Melissa Tuller know in the, uh, in, by March 1st. Uh, so uh, we, have, we have a list of questions that we can then send on over after this presentation to Berlin. Uh, and uh, I know, uh, so I, don't, I don't know if Tom is here or not. I don't know if, yep. is he yes, right here? here. There he is, okay, great. So I know that this is a conversation and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, my name is Tom Badowski. I'm with the town of Berlin. Many of you may know that Berlin does not have a traditional downtown and has been the town, uh, our constituencies have been really looking to establish such a facility where people can meet, uh, recreate and, and uh, prosper their community. So for about 25 years now, the town has been looking to uh, uh, develop a new town center application. It's a state formula that uh, gives permitting, permitting and uh, financial incentives to towns like Berlin to in effect create a downtown. With me tonight is Brandy Saxton and Paul Simon. I would like for them to be able to show some of the uh, concept drawings that we have. Uh, the town of Berlin has, as of um, February 1st of this year, submitted to the state of Vermont a application to create a new town center. Tom, I've put the map of the new town center up. Thank you. And so the, the what the board can see here is the area where the, it's being proposed for the new town center in red is a 118 acre uh, series of parcels centered around the Berlin Mall campus and the Central Vermont Medical Center. Uh, the Berlin Mall is represented by uh, uh, numbers two and three and Central Vermont Medical Center is uh, number eight there. Uh, the, it's a 118 acres by Berlin's population, it could, could have been a maximum of 125. We had some limiting factors of wetlands and such. Uh, so th th those are existing conditions today. Um, let me show our, and here's the concept plan that we have submitted to, to, the, um, uh, to the state as of Monday morning. There's really uh, several sections in um, Brandy or Paul, you want to maybe talk about each of these sections here as, as in a in fairly uh, quick and succinct order? So Paul, I think you were going to do that. Sure. Um, yeah. So basically the new town center has two nodes proposed here um, in this, in this section, we have the route 62 entrance that comes right off on that uh, kind of yeah, north uh, west side. And then we have the CVMC, um, there's a parcel at Fisher Road in Route 62 there. And then there's, there, there's also a, a connection to that part of it 
there that's on center with the center of the mall itself. So that's like Center Street and there's a rotary in the middle there. The majority of the proposed development for the new town center includes housing. That's what is in demand and that's what is um, much needed, um, not just in Berlin area, but throughout Vermont, um, especially uh, workforce housing and affordable housing. Um, Chestnut Place is currently under construction. That's a senior housing facility that's next to the mall there. Um, and then Fox Run is letter A there across from Chestnut Place, which is also um, in the works as well. So those, those, those two are, are happening now. Um, the rest of this uh, plan is proposed uh, new town center development. And we're looking at it in a comprehensive way to include a variety of uh, mixed uses, a multi-use path that'll circulate around the perimeter and provide you know, uh, good walkability and pedestrian access with very limited uh, vehicular curb uh, uh, crossings uh, for, you know, for, for safety reasons. And we have also uh, extensive stormwater improvements. Um, we're actually breaking apart the mall uh, parking lot quite a bit to add stormwater uh, uh, bioretention areas. Um, we're also changing the configuration of how the vehicular flow currently flows straight in front of the mall for safety reasons. We're really pulling that around the back um, and creating intersections at those two corners of the mall to, to, to really slow people down um, and create a, a safer environment. Um, so we have um, quite a bit here involved with this. We've got short order restaurants. We have a small one. We have a medium sized restaurant. And we have a, a large, a larger restaurant as well. So there's three types there. There's um, uh, the CVMC has uh, clinic uses proposed. We have um, strong pedestrian um, designed uh, components, um, different street typologies. Um, in the CVMC parcel there at the Fisher Road and Route 62 intersection, we have what's called a P Street 2 that's in the middle of the, the building block forms, to, which really um, is away from all the vehicular <laughs> aspects and parking. And it's really creating that environment that the new town center desires. So, and we have a lot of the, the new forms here with this uh, uh, creating that. So the, the blocks of the residential buildings that are across from the mall have a community green as well, which will uh, really came out very strongly in the community um, participation process that we did online because of COVID, but that, that was very strong. And uh, we have residential buildings fronting that. We have um, a performance area that's in red there for that, that'll accommodate, accommodate that um, and many other aspects to it. So I could go on and on, but I know we have a short uh, amount of, of time, but okay. So, so what? Um, Go ahead, Randy. I was just going to say to before we flip to the next um, slide to show the area that involves the school's property. Um, one of the requirements of the new town center designation is that there be a civic building uh, within the designated area. And so that is part of the, the requirements and the reason the town is looking. Well, uh, one of the reasons obviously the town has a need for a expanded town facility uh, fairly soon in the in the future, running out of space um, at the current facility. But uh, the reason the town is looking to site a facility inside the designated area. So this this shows the gateway area coming off of 62, and the municipal facility that uh, uh, Randy just talked is is this a number five? And you'll see number two is a, a series of uh, basketball and pickleball courts. So we we envision this area as a place where the people can come to do town business and also take advantage of uh, some of the various uh, outdoor recreational facilities we we have. The, what we're as the as the majority of this uh, proposal currently sits on uh, Unified uh, School District ground, uh, the, we are asking the, your board to consider 
uh, gifting back to the town of Berlin of approximately 7.4 acres where this campus would, would sit on. There's a, there's a rendering of it. You could see the mall building there. Uh, you could see the school, school building. Uh, so this is the area that we're approximately 7.4 acres. Of that, the lighter brown area is wetlands. It's about 3.6 areas. So the, 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 the developable area is uh, approximately uh, 3.8 acres. And uh, this will facilitate our construction of a municipal uh, center for the town. It will, uh, and again, the, the, but the, the vast uh, majority of the development for our new town center is residential. We envision somewhere between three and 500 uh, residential units to be constructed over the next 10 to 15 years. We see that bringing potentially 40 to 60 students to the Berlin Elementary School. Uh, and so we, we really see that this, this plan is, a, uh, is, a, is, a, is a beneficial to all parties here tonight. Um, uh, that's it in a nutshell. We do invite folks to, to if they want to come visit this area, uh, we'll gladly show you around. Winters will kind of tough to see some of it, um, but you have uh, in the packets that we, we sent to you, the, the complete drawings of the, the concept plan we have, we are going in front of the regulatory uh, officials um, February 22nd. That's when they begin their hearings on this concept plan. And we would uh, uh, welcome any questions that uh, Brian, you and your group have. Thank you very much. Um, so for my fellow board members, Today we are in listening and watching mode. Um, and as Brian mentioned earlier on, questions that we have, we should put together and send over to Melissa for further transmission. And um, we will eventually be making a decision, but that is still um, some way off. Uh, I know this is a question that should be perhaps with Melissa, but um, is there a time frame for when a decision would need to be made, Tom? There's really not. It's the, uh, well, what, uh, once we get the uh, designation, assuming we're gonna get the designation, uh, the, the town's gonna look at uh, funding sources. We're looking at a tax incremental financing district. Um, all these things take time, takes um, voter support. I, ideally, uh, we, we would like uh, your board to, uh, to give, give this consideration, come back and, and hear maybe a more formal proposal from us. If sometime by the fall of 2021, a decision be, can, could be made, that, that timing works for us. Uh, so there's, there's, there's no, it's not a critical uh, item right now, but um, we do uh, um, really need your support to help this project move along. Understood. And we can't thank you enough for getting to us early so we have a chance to actually think <laughs> over time for a change. I, I, I just wanted to say to, this to, 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 to show the, the, the investment that the town of Berlin has made. In, in 2015, they, they put in their first ever municipal water system, uh, and that was about $6 million. In 2018, the, they, the, the Planning Commission uh, adopted a uh, road to new town plan, which was the foc the focus of that uh, plan was this uh, this uh, new town center that was overwhelmingly uh, approved by the voters of the town in August of uh, 2018. The the, the uh, constituency approved the 2.2 million dollar sewer improvement project bond. Um, and the, the school would receive some of the fruits of that labors this fall. We replaced your entire uh, wastewater system at no cost to the school. Uh, and so um, now you should see a much more efficient system on, on the go forward. Uh, we developed a, in 2019, uh, a unified code, which took our 1980 zoning regulations, completely revamped them. And, and that received uh, nearly two to one approval by our voters. 
in um, uh, March of 2020, the town voters approved a $600,000 additional um, uh, bond vote for the water system. The, uh, our, our initial water system was such a, 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 a hit that we, in effect, ran out of water. And so we needed to, to develop more water to help supply this, this new town center. So um, we've seen a really, from, from the constituency of the town of Berlin, embrace this idea. And we hope that uh, you all can see the value as well. That's great. Thank you so much for that background and for this presentation um, to you and, and Paul and Brandy. Much appreciated. Thanks. Thank you. So um, I guess we can move on to 4.2.3. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, so this is just. Wait, wait, wait. Scott. Scott. Sorry. <clears throat> I hear Chris. How should we? How should we uh, prepare our questions for forwarding to Melissa? Uh, um, Berlin. We don't have make it. Um, the go through Melissa. Hello. Yeah. Um, we kind of lost. Okay. So we send, we send our questions. Yeah. Do we send our questions to Melissa? Yes. To Melissa. And she will okay. Thank you. She will um, coordinate the transmission and the receipt of answers and all of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great, thank you. Of course, you're welcome. Um, thanks, everyone. Brian. Yes. So uh, this is just a, a quick update on the uh, tax estimates, the, uh, where there's some a uh, lot of chatter and talk going on at the uh, state level. So I'm going to turn this over uh, to Lori to. Uh, Give us her two cents, maybe more. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. That was good. Um, so I included a memo on page 32 and a chart on page 33 of your packet. And what I wanted to share was that if you hadn't heard it in the news, um, that the state has had a huge change in their revenue forecast since December. So the House Ways and Means Committee took a vote to actually consider that extra revenue in giving out information to school districts. Unfortunately, the information came after our town reports are printed, um, but we wanted to share this with you tonight to let you know the good news. So what happened was they were projecting um, a $58 million deficit at the state and it became an $18 million surplus which resulted in the change of $76 million at the state level. Um, when they factored that in, the property yield um, would increase, which means that property tax rates would decrease. So what I gave you on page 33 at the bottom um, shows that if this plays out throughout the legislative session, which we know there's a long way to go, um, that every town at Washington Central would be seeing a tax reduction. Yay. I said, I'm going to say happy day. I haven't said that in a while. Um, so, you know, that's the great news um, if this goes through. So hopefully you can continue to lobby people. Janet Ansel was the one who's chairing this committee, and they did release this to school business officials. Unfortunately, like I said, for us um, and for many others, it was already printed in the town report. So hopefully we can do something with an article in the paper about this. Um, but at the same time, Brad James has worked really hard at trying to put together an equalized pupil number. And I think you recall, we've been trying to calculate that internally. And um, the good news is his equalized pupil numbers that he's been giving out as of today reflect um, uh, better news for Washington Central. Um, and there's a couple reasons for that. One of them is because Washington Central has a high number of students attending early college. And there's a provision in the law that holds schools harmless if you go beyond a certain point um, of your class. There's a multi-year look back for the students. And again, it's probably more detailed than what you need tonight. But the good news is that would increase our equalized pupils. In addition to that, and it's not so good news, but um, our poverty uh, students have increased, which means we have a lot more families um, getting um, support from Medicaid and from other state funded programs. So our equalized pupil count for this year would go up higher than our projections. Um, the numbers on page 33, uh, the savings of like 14 and a half cents at Berlin, 
would actually be about 15 and a half cents if this equalized pupil uh, count is finalized at the numbers that we currently have. So I've kind of babbled on. Um, I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but if not, I'm open to questions. Thank you very much, Lori. Um, it is it is welcome news. Thanks. Um, are there any questions for Lori from any of you? Or straightforward enough? So we'll work on some kind of a press release to put out in the next week or so to let people know in our communities. I know Brian does a lot of um, community outreach with newsletters to families. Um, and maybe the principals could also put this in their newsletters to share the good news so that at least it will be out in addition to the um, the report. And thank you. <laughs> Our thanks to you, needless to say, Lori. Um, great. So shall we proceed then, Brian, to 4.2.4 COVID-19 update? Uh, yes, this is a, a another quick item, uh, which is happy, it's happy to say it's a quick item, uh, considering we're in the midst of a global pandemic. The uh, just so uh, everyone knows that you know schools are open, all is well, uh, folks are safe. We are uh, going to be doing surveillance testing again uh, next week, uh, which will be happening uh, next Wednesday. And uh, as of right now, it appears that the state of Vermont is also uh, keeping track of participation rates amongst faculty and staff who participate uh, any school across the state of Vermont. And I'm happy to say that the last time I checked, uh, Washington Central School District was number one in the state amongst uh, participation rate. So uh, our staff and faculty are taking it very seriously. And uh, just a big thanks to everyone. Uh, Elizabeth, I don't know if you have anything else to add. Oh, I think you're muted, Elizabeth. I think I know by now. Um, <laughs> so I, I think things things are looking very good in the district. You know, we have had no, I shouldn't say it, right? But uh, we really had no cases in schools um, in some time. And that's, you know, there's been a lot more cases in the area, but we seem to be doing the right things and it seems to be working. You know, I it, there's a lot of, there's still a lot of fear and a lot of worry I think that the surveillance testing for staff is a real good um, indicator, and it also does does relieve, relieve a bit of anxiety of people. You know that we know that there's, you know, the last time it was zero. You know, no no positive cases in that surveillance testing. There were 220 staff who tested, so um, we're we're working on that. So I think things are going okay. You know, we're keeping a close watch on it all, and. Um, so far, so good. And I appreciate what everybody is doing is amazing. I think people are a little tired, but they're carrying on. We'll be ready for a vacation in a couple of weeks, I believe. A well-deserved vacation. Mm -hmm. um, any board member questions for Brian or for Elizabeth? If not, um, once again, Oh, did I, am I missing someone? No, just thank you for doing. Oh it. yeah, it creates yeah. a lot of stress in everybody. So thank you, Elizabeth and Brian and the whole team. Amen, amen. I appreciate your saying that, Flora. Um, good. I, I guess we can proceed then to four point two point five, table of uh, organization. Yeah. So uh, this is a, an important and timely. Uh, uh, Presentation. I want to. I'm going to ask uh, Jim uh, Garrity to please put it up. Uh, there is. Uh, I try to. Everyone knows that I do things intentionally, and I know that we're about to have a curriculum management review. Uh, we are a newly merged district, and there are some uh, things for your consideration as we uh, continue to move from SU to SD, meaning uh, supervisory union to. Um, so to a school district. So uh, this is a view from within. I just want to uh, share this with the uh, board tonight. Um, and uh, we move to the next slide. Uh, so basically, uh, if you see in the bottom of the corner there, uh, the, the uh, I, it says that every cloud has a silver lining, right? With the uh, challenges that our district has been going through, 
Uh, and there are some of, some of them right here, right? Uh, these are, you know, I, about two weeks before I, I, thought, I thought about this uh, presentation, I had a uh, fortune cookie and it popped up and it said, everybody loves progress, but nobody likes change, right? So, uh, and it seems to me that uh, this district, which was newly merged, has had a lot of change heaped on it all at once. Uh, and uh, the good news is uh, the strong culture here in the district, uh, there's a real strong culture here amongst the uh, adults who work with children every day and the board and the communities that uh, folks are able to get to work, work their way through this. Uh, the bad news is there's probably a lot more change coming uh, down, down the pike as we continue to consolidate, as you've had three superintendents in three years, declining enrollment, we've had budget challenges this past year, uh, maybe may, maybe there'll be better news. Uh, we're always hoping, and of course, we're trying to figure out how to improve our student achievement. Next slide. Uh, we're also fighting facing all these obstacles while facing a global pandemic. Next slide. Uh, when uh, I was hired as your superintendent, the uh, advertisement said. Uh, uh, you wanted someone who was an educator, who was more democratic, inquisitive, it's experiments, delegates, and balances uh, different uh, uh, constituencies in making decisions. Uh, these are the uh, pieces of, that I've been trying when I work with my, when I enter the superintendency here in Washington Central and I look at the work that's, that we're uh, facing with the challenges, that's, that's where I try to land at all, at all times. Um, Sometimes I, you know, I don't think I ever play it safe. Maybe I need to sometimes play it safe a little more, but I think sometimes uh, I try to make sure I'm on the, on the left of that uh, uh, spectrum. Next slide. And hence, uh, we've been working uh, with, with uh, in my entry plan and some of the things that we've worked on this year, uh, as, and, I, and I've worked on with the board here is to, you know, ultimately get to know our communities that is an ongoing process, especially during the pandemic. Uh, also working to reopen our schools with our leadership team and our teachers and the task forces. They've done amazing work. Uh, that I think that's gonna end up ultimately helping us increase student achievement when compared to other districts that are not open full-time. Uh, it gives our uh, children a sense of stability and safety. <clears throat> the other piece is, is uh, you know, we're, we're successfully continuing to move from that supervisory union model to a school district system. And uh, part of that is a, a part of this uh, presentation today is really to accentuate some of that. Uh, and, and as we're talking about here, the uh, implementing a bottom-up strategic planning process. And so we're conducting a curriculum review. I'm getting to the end of my entry plan. So I'll have more information for the school board. Uh, we're ultimately gonna have the leadership team review our uh, artifacts from the entry plan and curriculum review teacher and staff input, getting input from the communities, and last but certainly not least, getting the school board input on all these documents as they come. And uh, you know, one of the things that we're ultimately moving towards is getting a, creating a, an accountability system for our administrators and principals and myself, right? That's, uh, that's a big part of uh, the accountability process. Next slide. So we're, we're doing a lot of work here and a lot, and there's been a lot going on here. And I thought that uh, the board, uh, should just take notice of the, the good work that's happening in our district. The um, uh, piece of the thing is, you know, just to let everyone know, our team works as one unit. Uh, we have superintendent, school board, and administrators, teachers, ESP, educators, and students. And we all work within the confines of a larger school system. And I think the school system piece is something that we continually, I, I, I need to continually talk to the board about and talk to the uh, community about because uh, I'm gonna show you some things here that I think are some uh, interesting adaptive types of challenges, but they're, uh, but they're not without solutions. And I think the question is gonna come down to is how do we want to operate as a school system? Uh, because we're no longer a supervisory union. And I always say that every system is perfectly designed to get the results it gets. And that's from Edward, uh, W. Edwards Deming. A, uh, one of my favorites, but uh, so I think uh, you know, one of the reasons why I'm talking about this tonight is, you know, we talked about some great things that are happening in the district. 
we have our challenges with the pandemic and that the Act 46 consolidation, which is still still uh, here, uh, that we've, we've done a lot of good work. There's still a lot of work that needs to happen. Uh, and then, uh, and I think one of the big things is letting everyone know that there, you know, there's a whole industry based on this change management process, right? There's a person who wrote Who Moved My Cheese, which is a very popular book back in the 90s or 80s. Uh, Jim, I can see you. Uh, thank you. Uh, the, uh, and uh, it, it talks about, you know, when things change, how do people adapt and how do they respond? And then I think the other piece is on the right here is one of my favorite uh, books called uh, Our Iceberg is Melting. And it's about how does how do we create the impetus that we need to do something different? Right? How do we explore, how do we continue to say, hey, we want to do some things differently here in, in our, now that we're becoming a merged school system, and what is, what is, what is that going to take? Right, so if uh, you could please uh, just show the one-minute video here. I thought this was uh, nice. It kind of lightens the mood a little bit. Can you hear the volume? This, this is so a little louder. The Lieutenant Minister in an article, the South Pole. They are like a big family. They've been living as a colony on this iceberg for years, as far back as they can remember. It is their home. They don't know it yet, but change is coming for them. In order to survive, they will need to learn to change leadership process one step at a time. Oh boy, I have to do something. I gotta tell Alan. This is Alice. She is one of the Penguin's leadership council members. She is tough and has a reputation of getting things done. Alice, can I speak with you for a moment? I believe that our iceberg is melting. Really? Well, show me what you mean. So Fred took Alice to the heart of the iceberg. See, Alice? Our iceberg has cracks that lead to larger caves. If the ice melts sufficiently, water will pour into these cracks in caves. Would you give me a few minutes, please? Fred went quickly down the mountain and arrived minutes later with a glass bottle. Let's fill this bottle with water, seal it, and leave it in the ice overnight. Then tomorrow we can see if it's broken by the force of expanding water as it freezes. If I am correct, the bottle will be broken. Let's do it. We'll meet here tomorrow morning. The next morning, they found the bottle broken. Oh, I'm convinced. We have to do something about this. Let us call a general assembly of the colony. And with that, the Penguins started the change leadership process with step one, establishing a sense of urgency. Thank you, Jim. Uh, so, I, and I, I, what I really like about that video is it, it, it's a, uh, there are, there's a recognition of uh, that there's a need to do something a little differently. And uh, you know, I'm not saying that our iceberg is melting and here in Washington Central at all. What, but what I am saying is that we may have to consider doing some things a little differently. Uh, and uh, if you move on to the next slide, you know, here's some of the things that we're doing this year. Like, and if you looked at the, I like the uh, idea of the needs assessment, right? Let's let's put the, the like the penguins did with the, uh, glass jar that the glass bottle that broke, you know, and so to help identify what they need to do. But here are the pieces here of uh, what we've been working on this year as a school board and as your superintendent. And uh, I just want to take you back to your two school, your two goals uh, adopted back in October 21st, approved student achievement. We're now doing a needs assessment to uh, help fully better realize and understand what we need to do in order to hit that and understand that and set more goals around student achievement. And that's a curriculum re review. We're looking at uh, strategic planning. Uh, I've been working uh, with uh, many different folks in our district about job descriptions and responsibilities. Uh, we're tr the ultimate goal is to get there uh, with our district employees for all district employees. If we turn to the right here, we have board governance, uh, continuing to work on that. The board has developed their norms already for the meetings. Uh, we have not, we still have some work to do in developing a superintendent job description and a board uh, board of uh, ed job description. 
and uh, for more, more work on uh, formalizing our goals and board training, which will come with time. Next slide. So uh, I'm going to show you a graphic that I've been working on uh, this year, and I think it just kind of—I think it kind of gives a good. Uh, I, I, it gives, I should give you an idea. I'm hoping it gives you a good idea of uh, some of the things that we currently have. Uh, and I always been asking intentionally throughout the year, is our district structured the way we need it to be to improve student achievement? And the, the expectations are, are the job responsibilities and expectations of the past the same as what we will need in the future? So if we can uh, just open up that uh, or Oregon Emmy uh, chart there. Okay, we're gonna do that right now. One second, sorry. There we go. Yeah, so if you can go to the uh, the district office. And again, this is a work in process. But uh, uh, if we if you can, can, is there any way you can make that uh, bigger or? Yep. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so basically uh, if we look here, uh, right now this is our central office uh, leadership. We have, th there are, if you click on, you know, if you click on like, let's say Lori's job description real quick, you'll see that it's been updated. Right, and we did this already and we have a good, very good idea of her, her job roles and responsibilities as to what we need, what we need uh, this position to be moving forward. Uh, and this was just updated in 2020. So I think I think you've seen this already. So we can go back real quick. Oops, my apologies. Yeah, we don't need to go. They've seen this before. I just just wanted to make sure they have an idea. I lost the screen. Sorry about that. So, uh, so if you click on central office one last time, uh, so it, folks that have uh, job descriptions uh, are basically everyone in the central office except uh, Carla, the uh, which is our human resources coordinator, our director of special services, and our director of curriculum instruction and assessment. Uh, and outside of those folks, uh, I also do not have a job description yet, uh, and if. And I, and I think these are four key functions uh, in the central office uh, that I think the board and the district and our leadership team uh, really needs to come together on to, to figure out what it is that we want everyone to be doing. Because um, there is a, now, if you look at a lot of these job descriptions, if you clicked on you know, our, you know, any of these other job descriptions that have not been uh, redone, they basically align with a SU structure uh, that we've had in the past, but it's it's a different structure than a school district, and we have to really define what that will be. Uh, I mean, so we don't need to click on because what will pop up is their older job descriptions. Um, if you go back, if you go to the schools, Jim, can you go back? Yeah, you're seeing a little bit of a delay, Brian. Oh, okay. If you go to the WCUSD principles. Yep, I'm here. We have uh, job descriptions for all the principles. Uh, I want to point out, we don't probably need to click on all every single one of them unless the board members would like me to, but in, in the interest of time, we have six schools, six principles, six different job descriptions of what people are expected to uh, know and be able to do at their schools. And so uh, when you have, and that's really a remnant of the old system of how we uh, do things. So uh, ultimately just wanna let you know that those are uh, some things where it's, if you wanna have a, a predictable system where you can plan professional development and plan um, uh, opportunities to develop capacities of principals to become instructional leaders, to help support their teachers as best as possible. Uh, it's 
a lot of times central office serves as that function in a school district, which again, very different than an SU. So I just wanted to point that out to uh, the board as uh, we get the results, uh, the curriculum, as we, we conduct this curriculum review, we get the results back, we get other information from the leadership team and the um, ultimately the teachers uh, is all, another group we'll wanna definitely work with to look at uh, how we look and consider these positions. So I just wanted to uh, let everyone know that there is a, you know, I don't know if you want me to click on any of the uh, different job descriptions here. I mean, would, that, would it be helpful to just see, I mean, you can see that they're extremely different. Uh, some of them have font from like the night, from a very long time ago. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to say what years, but it's from a very, very long time ago. Uh, this is the um, board descriptions here. Uh, we're still work, we still haven't defined what those are yet. Um, but uh, sometimes there's some other work that we would probably want to do uh, in this area as well. So just letting so you know that we're, 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 this was done intentionally to show you that there are um, lots of different uh, folks who are working in our district. We have really good people working here. Uh, and it's just an opportunity to say, hey, we have job descriptions and we have folks that are doing jobs. But at, as we're becoming a unified district, we may have to rethink these uh, job descriptions and how people do the work and how the work is structured throughout the district. And that is my uh, presentation. Any questions? Thank you, Brian. Yeah, um, board members, if you have anything for Brian on that, I can just say that this is uh, not something that the uh, superintendent uh, should be doing alone or in isolation. This is a collaboration and it's gonna have to be uh, a lot of work uh, on behalf of the leadership team and, and folks as we figure out what it is that we want to do and how we structure our district as it is a newly merged district. So uh, it, you know, it's, it's an opportunity, I think it's exciting and uh, you know, and it's also an opportunity to update the job descriptions, which haven't been updated in many years. So, thanks, Brian. Diane. So, will these documents be live anywhere so that we can refer back to them? Um, um, it, just as we're processing all the information. Yeah, I think we. I can. Uh, we could probably do that. Uh, I mean, I, I, we have. We've been basically putting it together. We haven't finished it, but. Uh, but it, it's really as it builds as you go, right? I mean, this could, this is a process that could take a while, right? Because you want to get it right. You don't want to uh, just put something out there. And, uh, and and every job description we follow, we've been doing a following a process, right? The, uh, you know, I mean, Kelly Kelly will uh, talked about the uh, uh, ESP job descriptions last time. Uh, we've been talking about this very collaborative process, and so. Uh, these other positions, including mine and the, and, and the boards and uh, some of these key, key instructional pieces are gonna really involve a, a village <laughs> to make. So would you prefer, are, are you asking, do you think it should be posted somewhere um, for, for, for maybe on our website? We could probably put it up on our website. Either that or include it in the packet next time. It's just a way okay. to kind of reference back to what was said. Okay, All right, we can do that. Uh, uh, Kai. Yeah, uh, th thanks, Brian. Can you anticipate when we might face some decisions? Maybe it might be time to make some decisions about significant changes in structure or um, the responsibility associated with these different positions. I I do not. Uh, I I I could say that you know, I mean, we could do it. You know, change everything tomorrow, and that would be just horrible for everyone in, in the system uh, uh, and get get it wrong right so it's really about getting it right uh, so you know, for example looking at uh, the curriculum management review how do we manage our curriculum how do we uh, build and write and develop and monitor curriculum and how does that look and what does it currently look like do we have it in our job descriptions do we not right uh, and I would some of the job descriptions have are have things in it that others don't and so I think it really comes down to is getting together with the really smart people on the leadership team uh, and presenting that, but really having a better idea of what is it that we want to do 
And so I think it's going to go hand in hand with the strategic planning process, right? Where, whereas we're coming up with all these different ideas of what we can do, and then it's going to be what we want to do, and then it's going to be about what we actually do. And you really want to make sure that your description lines up with what we're actually going to do, uh, not what we can or want to do, right? Because uh, and, and then maybe tweak it as we, as as you. I mean, any organization worth its weight in gold, in my opinion, is updating the descriptions as the jobs and and the schools evolve over time to meet the needs of the children. So I think it's going to take some time. I don't want to put a timeline on it, Kari, uh, but I think it'll be fluid. I think some positions will get updated before others. Um, and it'll just be kind of a, a rolling, kind of like it's been this year, like one or two here, one or two here over time. Thanks, Lindy. And then Flo? Um, I think, I don't know what I think, but um, one of the things that sometimes disturbs me is the Act 46 was very, very painful for a lot of people but it wasn't because our six schools weren't working together, because they were. As um, WCSU, we had carousel board meetings where we worked together. We were looking out for the kids across the district. The difficult part was all about funding and control. It wasn't about our leadership teams working together. And so sometimes I feel a little bit like statistics like three superintendents in three years, but four superintendents in 25 years um, isn't quite as shock factor, I guess. Uh, so I don't want to give the impression that this was a very broken system. I'm not yeah. saying there's not room for change and improvement, but the teams were really working together. The schools were on the same page in a lot of ways. And so I just don't want throwing out the baby with the bathwater kind yeah. of thing. And yeah. felt I had to say that. Yeah, and, and, I, and, I, and that, that would never, I, I hope that didn't come across like that. Uh, I, you'd never want to throw out the baby with the bathwater or the bathwater with the baby either way. Uh, definitely not. I mean, I, the, the key is working together, right? And, and everyone really works very well together in our district. I, I think it really comes down to is, is what is the glue that's going to continue to bind folks to do this work together and how do we define that and and i think that there's conversations about how does the current structure does it serve again i'll just put this out there does the current structure uh give us the give us the results that we want for our children uh and uh if it does that's great we don't need to change anything uh and if it does then you know what what does that look like right if it, what, what 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 needs to be tweaked what needs to be updated and any organization i believe in my opinion constantly needs to have that conversation and look at look at those things uh, as we look at continuous improvement thanks Flo? Yeah, so I, I appreciate the presentation i you know i think it's something that we need to be brainstorming but I, and i like your comment on the end especially that it's a collaborative thing that you'll be doing with the leadership team too it just, I'm all about visuals. It, and the first visual where you put, you know, superintendent and, and gym and it, so that's not a call name. So tech, technology and uh, a business administrator, they should be at the same level as the leadership team yep. or we should change it because, so like Kelly and Jen, as far as I know, are your assistant superintendents. Mm -hmm. So just as far yeah. as graphics, because yeah, I mean, it's, it's the wrong yeah. message, and I know that you're just uh, yeah. Ulti it, ultimately, yeah. Jen and Kelly are going to have their own page. They're going to have their own page, yeah. Uh, just, <laughs> and they got. Yeah. So we just had to define all the other pieces, so th that's why. The, yeah, I'm just yeah. saying at the visual. Yeah. So don't worry. I'm just saying as a visual, yeah. it's 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 confusing and sends the wrong message okay. to to others. Yeah. And one, one thing to add to Floor's comment, and I think it's a good one, is that um, I'll work with Origami because um, basically what we do is we load the data into the system and then it builds the chart for us. So as we build the different groups. So I do agree with you. Um, IT is nowhere near at the same level. I wouldn't even consider it one of the strategic pieces of the group. So it would it would really fall somewhere else. It almost falls under, you know, if I'm, if I, when I think about in for-profit organizations, it falls under finance generally. So it almost falls under Lori, right? So it's, it's, it's those types of things that, that we look at. 
So I'll work with the origami team. That was the, 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 the tool that we went with, and we'll see how we can make the appropriate adjustments. I'll work with Brian and, and even Lori to, to figure out if it, if it should rest there. Thank you, Floyd. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, or, maybe, it, or maybe it even it goes under director of curriculum, uh, or you know, it, it depends, right? I mean, those are the conversations that we have not yet had, right? So I'm just putting putting that. This was just a the purpose of it was to give you an idea that there are certain positions that have job descriptions that have been updated, and others that don't have them because uh, we still need to get a collaborative process to update them. So. Thanks. Uh, any other board members wish to comment? Before we move on, I, I think um, on this project, Brian, I'm, I'm not mistaken in thinking that we, the board, will also have something to say about our own um, contributions or articulate our own responsibilities in this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I would say, Scott, that uh, the the biggest challenge, and, and, I, and I think it's, you know, I'll, I'll just say it, uh, and it's it's something just for everyone to consider when you don't have clearly defined uh, responsibilities or roles. Sometimes folks step in different different areas with unintentionally, and it sometimes could create unnecessary conflict, uh, which isn't always good for the culture of of the district. And so, uh, you know, so I think that as you as uh, we as we continue this uh, newly unified district, you know, there's something to consider. And I think that. Uh, making sure that everyone has clear understanding of what their roles and responsibilities are uh, and how they're going to relate to the strategic plan and how what the what are the ultimate goals of the board uh, I think it'll I think it cre it creates an opportunity not to have any uh, hurt feelings or people feeling like they're upset or not not included or things like that so I so it, so it takes some time though and I think that uh, it'll continue to take some time to get there where we need to go. Thank you. Um, are, are we good on this? Ready to move on to MTSS? Yes, um, I'm not gonna say too much about the MTSS piece. I'm gonna let Jen and Kelly, uh, they've been working on this for, before I was here as superintendent, they have been uh, working with uh, uh, a number of folks in our district on MTSS and we're, we're trying to get this system uh, um, we're trying to enhance the current system and make it uh, more accessible to more children. So, Kelly and Jen. Excellent. Before, before um, uh, Kelly, Jen, before you go to it, shall we make a motion? And then have you be part of the discussion of that motion? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, so basically uh, we're looking at posting a MTSS resource developer or and also trying to simultaneously find out if uh, there's a contract person out there for hire. We have a grant from the Agency of Education. We have to spend it before June 30th, and there's an opportunity to see who's out there uh, to help us help us with this work. So, um, in developing this uh, MTSS system, uh, for, uh, not developing it but enhancing it. So, uh, great. So um, would anyone care to make the motion on page 35? I'll move to approve the position for MTSS resource developer using grant funds for the remainder of the school year. Thank you, Jonas. Is there a second? Dorothy, a second. second. Ah, Dorothy beat you to it, Chris. She's too nimble. Um, okay. She uh, is nimble. <laughs> Um, discussion. Uh, Kelly and Jen, would you like to uh, introduce this? Sure, I'll start. Kelly, help me out if I forget anything. <clears throat> I'll just share a little bit of context. About this time last year, maybe 13 months ago, Kelly and I and a few folks from primarily East Montpelier started attending a series about uh, multi-tiered systems of support, really analyzing what went well in terms of the initial rollout across the state and what the improvements were, especially related to roles and responsibilities for students and student achievement. And um, also thinking about some of the recommendations from the DMG report. 
And we um, decided that we had some work to do in our system. And as you recall, MTSS and the educational support team, ESP, were part of the 2016 to 2021 implementation report. So we had started that ball, we were doing the PD, we were developing the module, and then COVID hit. That's sort of the common refrain. Um, and so that work had been halted. We moved forward with the continuous improvement planning work that we had started. Those of you who were involved in it, and even last month, you heard that MTSS was a big piece of that work and it just hadn't been actualized. So we were taking that work up in the past probably month or two. We were revisiting that work, thinking it was time to start rolling it out again and realized we needed to take some take stock of sort of the current state a little bit. A lot has happened and changed since January or February of 2020. We needed to do some of the work, even the CIP work that you all um, learned more about last month had never officially or formally been rolled out at the school level yet. So we're ta taking a few steps back to just get folks on the same page and realizing that that MTSS work is, is vitally important. So the concept behind, um, behind this position or service, we're not sure who is available or how to make it happen, is really to help us further that work, to help us do some design around um, roles and responsibilities and make sure that concretely we have tools at teachers' fingertips so that it's really easy to do some um, more formative assessments or progress monitoring along the way. And Kelly can speak to the, again, the SSIP and how it's related to the SSIP. Yeah, and I think, Jen, part of the bigger context of this is also positioning us to implement Act 173, right? So that, that's in here, too, in the mix of all of this, which is, um, you know, there are four components to 173 and around the comprehensive curriculum. Jen, I don't know if I'll, if I'll be able to rattle off all four, but um, the assessment plan and EST. And what was the needs third? Assessment. The comprehensive Thank needs you. assessment. Right. Yeah. And so that's all part of this. And we, as you know, you heard us talk about, I think a couple of weeks ago or maybe a month ago, the SSIP, so the SSIP, um, that too is to help us and take a look at our current MTSS structures and how, um, right, that comes with a systems level coach. You heard me explain that the last time. And so in talking with her, we, and the, the MTSS um, resource coordinator position, we talked about how can all of these pieces go together? And that's when we um, came up with this job title of MTSS resource developer, because the SSIP systems coach will help, can help us take a look at our S MTSS system as a whole. So this spring, the goal is for us to really establish, um, look at all of our data, pull it all together to see how we can um, position ourselves to have um, a more comprehensive structure to roll out in the fall. I think another thing I would add to this, just to make sure that it's clear, is that you know that Doty has been identified as a school in need of comprehensive supports, and so there are monetary supports that go along with that. It's the way that we funded and supported the CIP work last spring that was through the Doty School Improvement, or SI grant, Things need to be grounded and anchored in DOTI because it is DOTI that was identified for comprehensive supports. But we can make sure that at a systems level, there is sort of incidental um, benefit, so to speak. And um, and as I mean, as we were just talking about, it's really important for our for us to maintain the coherence that exists that already exists and enhance the coherence in the system for our kids. We're pre-K through grade 12 or graduation system. And we want to make sure that, um, that we're really looking at this from a systems perspective for our students. Uh, thank you for that comprehensive look. Um, I see Chris has his hand up. So Jen, this is a question for you. Um, please explain a little bit more fully um, the uh, anchoring of this is these is this position going to be anchored at Doty, and there will be incidental benefit dis, um, uh, district wide. Um, yes. 
Yes. Or did I? Okay. Yeah, Chris, you're right. Okay. So, and the way that you can see in that job description, um, that it's it's at Jody and um, and Gillian Fuqua is the principal who will be supporting that position. We put in the roles and responsibilities um, a lot of sort of research and development across the system so that the person in that position can have a deepen, deepen their understanding of what is and is not working across all of our schools while mm -hmm. then coming up with, you know, some sort of system. And I mean, you, you all know very well that there have been um, different levels of resource at different schools in the past in terms, and that we've been working to um, really think about what's the level of interventionist, for example, that's required in each of our schools to yeah. meet our students' needs, that there's no sort of one size fits all. So we wanna just make sure that we're really clear about um, what our kids need and then how we're gonna to continue to support them. And no question about that on, on my part. Um, what I'm, so this is a grant funded position for the, for the rest of this school year. Are we, in t are we expecting um, that this will become a permanent type position that will then be um, brought into, folded into the future budget? So uh, I'll tell you what I think right now. <laughs> I think um, I think no. I think that the scope of the work for this position is finite. That we want to somebody who can get be the catalyst for the development and resources over time, so that then we can sustain it in the long run. So that's also why we can picture it as being sort of like a a project almost that goes out there versus a position. And it's super clear with the AOE that the funding is through June thirtieth. Great. Thank you very much. Many thanks. That that was very helpful. Um, uh, other board member, uh, Lindy. I I was curious about what I mean. There's a big job description here, and it says per negotiated agreement, but it doesn't say. Is this a teacher? Is this a researcher? What what is the negotiated contract, or what what is the position? I mean, I, I think we want to keep it open ended right now. I mean, I, I think ultimately uh, it'd be great to have a uh, we were trying to figure out, is there someone that, that is out there right now that's not working right? uh, that wants to come and work in our school during this time? And we were thinking maybe it's a retired teacher who has this expertise, uh, but uh, if it's a retired administrator, but I think it would be more or less something that would be falling under more of a teacher type of contract, um, at least from now till uh, June 30th. If uh, the, and the reason why we ask for the RFP is maybe that person doesn't exist right now. Uh, and so maybe we can cast a wider net to hire someone on a more of a contractor basis uh, to get them to come in here and work with us as Jen had described as a project. Okay, Lindy. Um, any, any other questions or um, concerns, etc. If not, we can go to a vote. Uh, uh, Diane, was that your hand raised or? Nope, okay. Then let's go to a vote on the motion to approve the position. All in favor, click yes. Opposed, click no. And I'm seeing all yeses. Motion carries unanimously. Thank you, everyone. And can I just uh, add one thing here that uh, extremely happy, uh, and I want to say it, happy with Kelly's work with this SIP and Jen's work with the uh, MTSS piece on this grant in particular. And it's great when you see two of these initiatives working to come together. Uh, and uh, just, just want to thank them for their uh, support and leadership on this. And just to let, let her know, we're definitely, again, I think this is a perfect example of not throwing out the baby with the bathwater, right? This is something that we definitely want to uh, continue to build upon. And this is, uh, again, an opportunity for our district to move things uh, along in this area. So thank you, Jen, and thank you, Kelly. Wonderful. Very good to hear. Thanks. Okay, um, then we can move on to the AmeriCorps VISTA program item.
Um, would anyone like to make a motion as on page 42, I believe, of the packet? I'll move that the district apply for the AmeriCorps VISTA program for FY22. Thank you, Jonas. Is there a second? Floor seconds. Many thanks. Okay, um, Brian? I'm gonna turn it right over to Kelly. So Kelly. Great. Yeah, so this is right just again asking for your permission to apply. Um, and just be super clear about that, right? It's not something that we're, we're guaranteed at this point, but part of the application process is that I have to have a, a superintendent signature as well as our board chair signature. So that's when I said to Brian, we probably had to ask the board before I go ahead and do this. Um, and so my current thinking, right, you'll see in this memo that I just, uh, I put a list here just of some projects and things that we could have this person do. You, know, you heard Lori say earlier in her budget presentation that the number of students that are eligible or meet the poverty criteria is on the rise. Our homeless numbers continue to be on the rise. And so one, some of the objectives of the AmeriCorps VISTA project, right, is to some community development, strength, strengthen some of our systems and coordination between poverty focused programs. And so, um, I happened to be on a listserv that this grant had come out. I'd actually had never heard of it. Um, and so I reached out and asked them if schools could apply. And she said, absolutely, but um, there's never been a school that's received this grant through this program. They, they have a youth build type of program as well that does support schools. But this particular grant would be the first time any public schools have received it should we be awarded the grant. Um, the commitment from us would be, um, as you'll see again in the memo, uh, we would have to pay $6,000, which is half of their, what the program contributes to their living expenses. Um, and we'd have to provide them technology to do the work that we're asking them to do, as well as mileage reimbursement for when they're moving throughout the, the school day. Um, and this would be a full-time person working here with us um, for the FY22 school year, if we were to get the grant. <laughs> Understood, <laughs> with that proviso. Excellent initiative. Um, board member questions? No questions? If not, oh, Diane. I'd just like to say thank you for the detail in the memo because it's very helpful to read through it and have a sense of it and then when you highlight. So thanks for that detail. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah. Um, so are, are we ready then to go for a vote on the motion to um, approve the application for the grant? All in favor, please click yes or if you're opposed, click no. And I'm seeing all the yeses. So the motion carries unanimously once more. Many thanks, everybody. Um, and once again, um, I, I'm, I, I love this ingenuity and looking for opportunities in places where they haven't necessarily been found before. Um, now, uh, we're about to go to the policy committee. Is everybody feeling okay? Do you want to try to plow through or do you need a break? Um, should, should we plow through? Two minutes. Um, oh, five minutes. Okay. Five <laughs> minutes. Right. Okay. Uh, back at 834. See you all. You've made my family happy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go. Um, so we have, uh, for the first time in a couple of meetings, we have some uh, policies uh, for first reading. Um, but first I'd like to uh, acknowledge Jim and Garrity's great contribution um, to the development of these policies. Uh, when he's not you know, based on how he looks tonight, I, I'm glad he took some time from his Harley shop to come in and be with us. Um, and and he presented us with like a 40 or 50 page 
computer, you know, electronic records security policy, uh, which which did us a great service. Uh, and then he and Brian uh, and others at the central office broke it down into uh, more digestible pieces, uh, the first three of which we're going to have tonight. So, um, again, great um, thanks to Jim because he did uh, he did more than yeoman's work in, in creating this policy and bringing it to us. Uh, and, and also just we had really good discussion over the past couple of policy committee meetings about um, – about the implications of this and how it would work in our district and made some changes and things like that. Uh, and uh, Amy Molina was very helpful in that regard too. Uh, so um, uh, I would ask that if any questions for these various policies, gonna ask Jim to chime in because he is much more expert in um, the policies themselves than, than uh, the, me or and I won't speak for the other policy committee members, but I think he would be more able to um, uh, clearly respond to, to questions about the policy. So we have up for consideration <coughs> for first reading um, uh, F-22, which is a data retention and storage policy. So if there, anybody have any questions on it? It sounds like the uh, the questions have been stored and retained in data, and they're, they're secure and safely packed away. So we'll go down to uh, now uh, F25, which is access control policy. Okay. Enough Jeopardy time has elapsed for questions. So we'll move on to our final policies, uh, which is F41, which is our reasonable care and protecting proprietary and or confidential information policy. Chris, it looks like Jonas has his hand. Okay. Chris, not so much a question about these policies, okay. but uh, more of a question to, I guess, Scott and Jim. Um, what kind of, you know, training and familiar, if we pass these policies, what kind of training and familiarization do you think would be necessary for the entire staff across the district to put this stuff in place? Because I think some of this is going to require some tech savvy uh, and some training. Yeah, so, um, you know, one of the things that I do for boards all the time, and I would love to do it for all of you and for the teachers and administrators, is we'll go through um, an overview training, and, and then we can do, you know, much more detailed training as necessary. And we'll do as much of it as you need. So it's, it's one of my favorite things to do. I'm a teacher at heart. I teach at the college level. I love it. So, um, you know, I, I can do it early and often. We can do it as a group. We can do it individually as much time as you need. I, I have a question. Um, how how will we adapt these policies as technology changes? Um, I imagine some of these um, different uh, protocols or, or however the proper term to refer to them is yeah. um, will change over time. It's um, a good question. We actually thought about that you know, and Chris has done a great job as, as you know, head in the committee. I've been really impressed. And, uh, you know, we've thought about that. I think what we've tried to do in these policies, and I, I hope we've done an adequate job, is to try to stay as technology agnostic as possible um, so that as technology changes, the policy doesn't have to change. I used an example in our policy committee that it would excite me in a, in a big way if we didn't have to change the policy for like 20 something years i think i used an example about a you know a, a, a record i still had at, you know at a, at a swim club you know I, i've had one for 20 years and it, so i'm like you know if we can keep if we can keep our policies they don't have to be updated for 20 years because they stay consistent between technology we're in a good spot so scott i i, I hope we've done that i you know I, I i should go back and look one more time just to make sure but um our intention was to was to be as agnostic as possible. Thank you. Thank you very Thank you. much. 
And, and Scott what, what, and, and fellow board members, what you'll see in the future is there is um, a policy that will talk about a, um, a, a basically a technology team uh, that is from across the, um, the various schools um, to, to take into account changes over time. And so keep an eye out for that. We're still wrangling with uh, composition and who appoints and who decides um, who will be on this team. Um, and there, there'll also be some issues of delegation of authority in terms of making changes um, for, for technology issues that come up. And so again, keep, we'll, we'll highlight those as they come along, but those are things that are percolating through our, our committee discussions. Okay. Great. Thank you. Chris. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. So um, we're good with the first reading then. Yeah. We excellent. Very good. So these will come back to us um, at some point soon, I imagine. Next meeting for a probably, second reading. Probably, probably, um, probably our, our next um, regular meeting. Excellent. <laughs> Terrific. Okay. Thank you so much, Chris. Thanks. Policy committee and See you later. Jim. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much to the policy committee. I know that, that you know Diane and Chris and Dorothy and everyone. I really appreciate everybody's you know helping council there. It's been really, really very beneficial. Even even the, the high school has been terrific. It's been awesome. Wonderful. Glad to hear it. All right, then we can move on to board operations. Five point one open board seats. Um. So, who wants to who wants to grapple with this one, Floor? Sure, I, I just well, most people are aware, but uh, George is not running for his seat in Berlin, and uh, Jonathan, who's with us, is running for a seat in Berlin, and then we have them sits in uh, in Worcester, uh, and I believe Jael, are you running at the right end? or it's open, the seat is so I'm open. stepping down in March, so that my seat will be open. Stepping down in March. Yeah, so it's, my internet is unstable, so hopefully you can hear me, but so just wanted to make the board aware of that, so which also brings us back to that conversation that we've been wanting to have about the side, this board. So could you, can you hear me okay? It keeps telling me that it's unstable, but. <laughs> So that that was that's pretty that's pretty much uh, why we had that there and the the agenda planning committee we did talk about uh, whether having two informational meetings or not and we all agreed to just have one so that would be March first uh, I don't have to front me but I'm pretty sure that's right and uh, so just one more informational meeting before our town meeting <laughs> and. Uh, I think that's all we had a, as report for for operations. So if you know of anybody that wants to run as a write-in for Worcester, a, otherwise Jonas is gonna be holding the fort for for them <laughs> and and Berlin. Also, we have a seat. Obviously, knowing that when we have wins to tabulate, right? But a, or maybe later on looking at appointing people, but we do need to. It would be nice to have more board members uh, representing, especially Worcester. I think I did find someone who's willing to run in Worcester um, as a write-in. So um, she is planning to email people. That's wonderful. Fantastic. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Great. Now I'm forgiven for all my interruptions tonight. <laughs> no, that's great. <laughs> Absolutely, Caroline. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it would be terrific if, if uh, the third seat in Worcester can be filled as well. And um, uh, still beating the bushes in Berlin, um, right, Diane and Jonathan? Yeah. Okay, uh, good luck. And if you need any help from, from us, if, if we can provide, you know, even minor entertainment value, um, happy to oblige. Well, I just Do want to clarify, too, in terms of um, appropriate communication or not, um, you know, as a board member, am I okay to reach out to 
like Berlin staff, I, I would really like to get or at least provide uh, reminders to families of young children as well. And so I just want to make, again, it's that being my first year, what are my appropriate roles of communication and uh, allowable roles? Um, if uh, recruitment of board members, as far as I'm concerned, go for it. Um, yeah. And uh, Jonas, did I, did I see your hand as well? Yeah, is there a threshold for write-in candidates? A number or a percentage? No, none at all. That's great. <laughs> oh, there is, but it's yes. not very high, I don't believe. I think, you, Jonas, in terms of the numbers, I think that has to be 30 votes uh, at a minimum for a writing candidate. Otherwise, um, it gets thrown to an appointment. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, anything else? Uh, I, I think, Flora, you, you just did a, a one-two punch on both the open board seats and the town meeting update, but you have more. Yeah, no, just a remind. So, yeah, I just pulled out my date. So, yes, March 1st would be, we had a, a, a February 17. We're skipping that one. We're going to do a March 1st uh, informational meeting. And then just a reminder that our official tell me is not today, it's March 2nd it, to everybody. That's it. Great. And then one last thing would be that it, one last thing would be that we should make, I, I know Brian and Lori talk about the posted in Front Porch Forum and make an effort to put the new tax numbers in Front Porch Forum because the information that they will be receiving in our is not updated, right? So, so we're printing as we speak. Right. Yeah, we may have to do this a couple of times over the just to get the make so, sure the message sticks. Yeah. yeah so hint uh the chair might want to write an old post in our front porch forum. Yeah. Maybe great. <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you, Flora. Um anything else on board operations? Comprehensive board operations. Lindy. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, when Flora was just talking about the front porch forum, if Lori could, maybe she already has, but at some point um, it hadn't gone to the town clerks so that it can go on the town websites. I know um, my husband got it up on the East Montpelier website when he saw her numbers were different than what they had posted he made sure it got up on the town website. So whenever those calculations get changed, it's a good idea to send them to the town offices too. Great idea. You say that's a great idea. Thank you, Lindy. Uh, we'll, we'll, work, we'll get to work on that. Thank you, Lindy, and thank you, Brian. Okay, are, are we ready for the consent agenda then? Do we have a motion to approve the minutes of January 13 and January 20. I'll move to approve the minutes of January 13 and January 20. I'll Thank second. you, Jonas. Uh, second? I'll second, Doc. Uh, thank you. Was that Jaya? Yes. Thank you, Jaya. Okay. Um, any changes to the minutes? D Dorothy? Um, um, I should be listed as in attendance for the January 20th meeting. Okay, good. Lisa, did you catch that? Sorry, yeah, I'll, I'll add you, Dorothy, sorry. That's okay. Um, any other changes? If not, all in favor of Approving the minutes of January 13 and January 20, please click yes. Opposed, click no. And I'm seeing all yeses. The minutes are approved unanimously. Thank you very much. And um, Lindy, sorry. <laughs> no, I've got it right here. Um, I appreciate it. I make a motion to approve the board order in the amount of one hundred seventy-four thousand seven dollars ten cents. Thank you. Is there a second? 
Do I'll, I second? I'll second. Oh, oh, thank you, Jael. Fleur, raise your hand. That, that's fine. Um, so, uh, any questions about the board orders? If not, all in favor, please click yes. Opposed, click no. <clears throat> Once again, I'm, I'm seeing all yeses. Great. Okay. Um, thank you very much again. Oh, and um, Flora, I'm sure, will remind us with her sort of usual setting the example email um, to write to Michelle and, and company. Next up, approve the educational support personnel job descriptions on page 53. Um, there are uh, three of them, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, <clears throat> I don't, I think they're quite self-explanatory. Are there any questions otherwise? Jonas. Uh, I just, well, first I want to thank uh, Kelly for working with uh, Becky and Chrissy and Mary Ellen. Um, Kelly, I, I, I would assume given your, your, your memo here that these job descriptions are all uh, okayed by, by those folks. They've reviewed drafts and gave input, yes. Thank you, Kelly. Thanks, both and of you. I, and there's four job descriptions. Oh, so my know. apologies, four. Four of them, um, just so that there's no mistaking. Okay. Um, I, 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 did, I did ask for a motion on this, didn't I? We're approaching the witching. I did not, okay. Um, anybody will move it? Move the four job descriptions? I'll move to accept uh, the four job descriptions uh, as presented in the packet. Thank you, Jonas. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Chris. If there is no further discussion, all in favor, please click yes. Opposed, click no. And again, all yeses, motion carries unanimously. Um, that's it with the consent agenda. Now we can move on to personnel actions. I believe there is just one. Um, would anyone like to move it? I can do that if you want. Um, Thanks, Libby. I make a motion to approve the change in FTE for Mary Carpenter. Um, I think that's enough because the paperwork says the rest. Excellent. Um, Second. Second. Jonas seconds. Lindy moves. Jonas seconds. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, please click yes. Opposed, click no. And I see all yeses. Terrific. Many thanks. Um, that's basically the, the substantive part of the agenda. Um, Public comments, are there any members of the public who wish to speak out at this point? Um, if there are, please go to your the um, reactions icon and click raise hand if you would, please. If not, then we can proceed to future agenda items. Um, <clears throat> is there um, is there anything? Oh, Kari, please. Yeah, um, something Floor said earlier reminded me. Um, we have a responsibility to make sure that the uh, district has an emergency executive succession plan. And um, I don't think it needs to take a lot of time, but we, I think it, probably annually we need to hear that here's what, ha what would happen if Brian were suddenly unavailable to perform. Excellent idea. That is definitely going on the future agenda item list. Um, <clears throat> emergency succession plan for um, 
district leadership for superintendency. So that would be 9.6. <clears throat> Thank you for that, um, Fleur and Kari. Any others? Um, okay. In that case, uh, uh, oh, sorry, Jonas, yes. Uh, sorry. My it's okay? Okay. Um, thanks. Uh, in that case, uh, there's still one more regular board meeting before, um, well, before town meeting. So uh, I won't, uh, I will say farewells to Jael and George for, um, for next time. But um, that is also a future agenda item of, of sorts. Um, anyway, board reflection. Anyone wish to, um, Caroline? I think we did really well in terms of time and sticking to what was on the agenda. Um, but as I reflect on the meeting, it seemed like there were some items that were included that didn't feel time sensitive to me um, and that maybe could have been postponed to another meeting. Um, and meanwhile, my request for time dedicated to discussing our superintendent evaluation was not allocated time because the agenda was so full. And so I just want to um, point out, which we all know that it is February and um, we don't have an agreed upon super uh, an agreed upon method to evaluate our superintendent. And as he pointed out in his presentation, he doesn't have a job description. Um, and so I just think overall, it would be great if we got more clear on our priorities and had tighter oversight into what items make it on the agenda. Thank you. Thanks, Caroline. Members of the agenda committee, I'm sure have taken note. Um, Stephen? Um. I'll echo some of what Caroline said. Uh, I think we have room for improvement, um, but I would also acknowledge that I've been um, very pleased with um, the advance notice of many more items and the um, good explanations of that advance notice of many more items. I think back just a few years ago, and uh, it's a dramatic improvement. Um, and um, I want to commend you on um, uh, over the last two or three me meetings, um, running, running a, a very nice meeting. I think you've balanced letting people be heard with um, um, very uh, tactfully um, interjecting uh, time awareness. So thank you. Um, you're very kind, Stephen. Um, I think I just got lucky, but I, I appreciate it. Um, and and really, it's a it's a collective venture, so um, I, I'm grateful to all of you for for just being mindful and and keeping um, self keeping yourselves disciplined. Uh, Jonas, uh, I want to second what Caroline said um, about uh, the importance of getting the superintendent uh, evaluation on here. Uh, time is uh, running out on that one. Uh, that one does have a deadline. Um, and I'm hopeful that the agenda committee can get that on uh, for, for next time. Um, about the timing of meeting, I think that uh, I agree with, uh, with Stephen. We have been really disciplined. Uh, but I want to make sure that we don't go too far the other way uh, and that we don't limit the things that we have on the agenda um, in the interest of time, that we don't limit necessary discussion in the interest of time. I still think, uh, you know, two meetings a month is probably not enough for us to do the best possible job we can. Um, and I, I, I hope that at some point there's, you know, more, uh, more of an appetite for going long if we need to. I just want to make sure that we're not, not limiting ourselves too much. Understood. Thank you. Um, Chris, and then Diane. 
Um, I noticed that we had no public comments this evening. Um, and I can't help but think that that is because it comes at the end of a very long meeting, including executive session. So I would um, uh, urge that we move the public comments portion of our meeting back to the beginning of our meeting uh, so that we can have and hear um, and encourage the public to participate uh, in our meetings and, and offer comments because it is the best forum for all of us to hear uh, what is on at least some of the public's minds as, as a collective. I, I imagine the public reaches out to individual members, but as a collective, um, that is the time when we, we will all hear it. And I think having it at the end uh, just um, discourages it. And we shouldn't, I, I don't think we should be doing that, uh, however unintentional it is. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Diane, and then Flora. Uh, one thing I think that would help as being a member of that agenda committee is when we put uh, in uh, ag future agenda items that when they are timely, that we have some due dates or, you know, hopeful dates. That would help as we're looking at that um, because coming into it, there's a lot of pre-prep that occurs. And so you get caught up in that sometimes. So it'd be helpful if we knew there were some more urgent, I mean, that should have been a no brainer around the um, superintendent evaluation, but again, it gets lost in, in, a, in that timing. Yes, um, part of it, I think, was that the superintendent evaluation is another work in progress still, but, but understood. Fleur. Yeah, Diane still my thunder. Yeah, we could add you know, dates in, and, and you know, the times is, Instead of adding the time, just put the time in each specific as we're running the meeting. I agree with Stephen that we've been running better meetings. I do want to say, if Chris is okay, that maybe we can provide a different venue. And that's what we have said as far as community engagement, where we can actually engage the community and let our meeting, because I think part of the reason our, our meetings are working better at getting into doing our business is sooner and keeping uh, Keeping our flow going, this it is the meeting of the board to get the work done, and having, you know, maybe there's specific when we don't have an executive session. There's maybe a specific time where we could add a half an hour before the meeting, for a be more intentional about how we ask for community input too. I think in, instead of making the change right now, I would advocate for for that. Thank you, Flora. Um, Brian. Yeah, I, I think uh, I just want to uh, remind board members that the, uh, a board meeting, a school board meeting is a meeting of the board's business in public. It's not a public meeting in a, where you're getting input. I uh, mean, you do get input, because, uh, but I do think that the best venue, the better venue would be to hold a special session where you just get public input uh, or about around a specific topic uh, or and you, and you can put warn something like that instead of doing a, uh, you know, in, instead of having public, worrying so much about the public comment in the board meeting. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's always, it's your choice. It's the board's choice, of course, but just wanted to uh, uh, remind folks of that. Uh, the superintendent evaluation, I know we've met, what is it, Carolina, Scott, Chris, uh, uh, and Kari, we've met, what, four times already? Four times in the last four weeks. And, uh, there's a lot of stuff to talk about, right? Be uh, because it's not just about my evaluation, right? It becomes the about the evaluation of the entire, uh, you know, uh, my evaluation impacts evaluations of the administrators and other people. So uh, so I think, uh, you know, I always put the plug in for a board retreat. I see you have it down there. It could be a good topic. So. Thank you. Um, would, would board members allow me to step back to public comments for a moment because a member of the public has his hand raised. Is there any objection among board members to hearing David Lawrence speak at this point in the meeting? Uh, not, no. No, no objection. Okay, David, all yours. Hi all, David Lawrence, uh, Romney, Middlesex. Um, I wanted, I, I agree with all of you in a way. I, I, I least agree, unfortunately, with Brian. <laughs> um, 
But Chris is right. I, I did have something that I was kind of curious about and would have brought up. But at this point, you know, it's um, three hours into a meeting and I have other things to do. And I just decided not to bring it up while you were asking uh, for comments. And it's not that important a thing, so I'm not going to bother with bringing it up now. Um, but it is something I would have asked about earlier. I think Floor is also right that, um, you know, this is, does have a little bit of an impact on the efficiency of running your meeting, although I haven't noticed in all of the meetings that I've attended that public comment period has tended to last all that long, um, even when people in the public have had um, something to uh, discuss. But the um, thing that I don't really agree with is I, I agree with the general sense of it doesn't like if I wanted to engage with the board, it doesn't specifically have to be during one of these, you know, um, semi monthly board meetings in order to do it. I would like a regular period, though, that is somewhat free form. The part that I disagreed with Ryan about was the idea that we would warrant and have a specific focus. No, like if I have a question that I want to bring to the board. I don't know what it is that I want to have it warned well in advance. Like the question that I had in mind was something that just happened this week and, and kind of, you know, threw into question, you know, school calendar scheduling for the school year and so on. Um, and so it just would have been, and, and perhaps it's also something better to engage with the administration on, which is a separate issue. But the, <laughs> my overall point is, you don't always know well in advance, you know, what it is you want to engage with the board is, and you don't want to have a whole separate meeting called for it. It did kind of like the idea of, well, maybe, you know, half an hour or 15 minutes before the regularly scheduled board meeting, um, then there could be kind of like an, an open mic time. Um, but um, I do think it has to be both regular, if not necessarily, you know, twice a month and free form. Um, and, and Chris is right, having it at the end of the meeting just, you know, kind of is like, okay, okay let's get on with the rest of our nights, <laughs> so. Thank you, David. Um, yeah, can I so, just, so uh, nice. can I just respond to David? I, I appreciate him disagreeing with me. Uh, I hear, I hear what he's saying and uh, he, he does have a good point. I would, I would just still reiterate that, uh, you know, and maybe it's not a, a special, maybe it's a special meeting without a topic then, or I have, but I'm just putting ideas out there. Uh, it's ultimately the board's decision. Right, yes. So, um, do we have any other uh, board reflections before we, uh, oh, Fleur, yes? No, <laughs> a look of horror. Oh, bye. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, I was just gonna say, any other reflections before we adjourn by consensus at 9.07? Um, and have a wonderful evening, everybody. Take good care. Many, many good thanks. Night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night See you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.